Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of us we have the UCS Ultimate Collector Series Massive Colonial Viper Mark II. This Battlestar Galactica model has been excellently designed by the builder David Duperon, and the Viper Mark II is one of the few ships from the 1970s that has stood up well against the test of time. Granted, this ship was spiffed up a bit from 2003, the reimagined series, and that is what this build is based on, but all in all, the basic design of this fighter has remained intact over the decades. There are several variants, but you can see the sticker detailing shows this is Starbucks ship, so you can assume this is the faster recon variant of the Viper, though externally the outward changes aren't really different from, I think, your standard fighter. Before I get into any of the major details of this build, first I want to say that you can find the building instructions at our web store, that's www.brickvault.toys. There are the PDF step-by-step -step building instructions as well as a digital parts list for quickly and easily ordering all the pieces that you're going to need online and included as well are the PDF files for printing the stickers. There's two different versions. We have the detailing once again for Starbuck, but there's also a corresponding set of details for Husker. Buying instructions from us is a great way to help support us here at the channel so we can keep on creating awesome builds like this for you guys and it helps support the excellent creators that we work with like David. Now let's jump back into the model. First I just want to get a general overview of of what this build looks like as a whole. It's absolutely amazing. It's really built like a rock, and David did an excellent job keeping most, if not nearly all, of the studs off this model. It's not necessarily a requirement to make a cool looking Lego ship, but you have to admit at this size, seeing a completely smooth surface across the entire Viper is a really good look for this model. At this increased size, the ship has all the space it needs to make the proportions match up just right, both when speaking about the size and shape and placement of the engines, but also those somewhat serrated or spiked edges of the wings seem to fit just right from the original models. The total measurements of this giant ship are 22 inches long or 56 centimeters, 10 and a quarter inches high when on the stand that's 26 centimeters, and 13 inches wide or 33 centimeters. Or also, this is what it looks like next to the minifig scale version of the same Colonial Viper. Being such a solid looking ship, it is extremely heavy, probably heavier than you might even imagine it being by just looking at it right now. I'll get into the handling of this ship a little bit later in the episode, but first I want to show you guys the functions. First off, the cockpit opens up to reveal a fully fleshed out interior, but the actual function of it coming up and kind of sliding out looks really, really nice, I think. It's pretty darn similar to how this cockpit would open up in universe. I don't think it cants upwards quite as much, maybe within the original design, though I think David found a pretty happy medium by just tilting it upwards ever so slightly and having the entire windscreen plus back windows slotted into a track that can just kind of have the whole build slide forward. I'll say right now that there is a little bit of a tight fit when sliding the windscreen back into place, like closing the cockpit. The seat just barely gives you enough space to get the windscreen back in place. Making sure you press all the pieces in perfectly precisely here is absolutely key, but the payoff is totally worth it, and we have a wonderful little build for an interior. The seat is rather large, as you can see. There's a build for a joystick, and other than that, it is actually kept pretty minimal. We didn't bother with stickers or alternate prints for buttons on the side. It's all black, minus the few little highlights of dark gray on the sides of the seat. But I personally find the most impressive parts of this build uh, uh, at least in terms of function, the landing gear is absolutely the coolest part. You can barely even see where those slots open up. They're indicated by those jumper pieces, and that gives you just enough space for your finger to catch the edge and then flip open both sides. What comes out are three very, very strong feet. They're even padded a little bit with little rubber uh, Technic pieces, and that kind of keeps the model feeling a little bit more fluid, and it can also sort of rock back and forth ever so slightly. At the end of the day, the the landing gear does not lock in place, so I would not recommend sliding the ship around with the feet just on the feet. You can totally slide the stand around, but there is just something kind of physically satisfying by having the rubber stoppers on the inside of the build, and you can really feel the heavy weight of the ship resting down when you actually set it on the ground. And when you saw the ship earlier, and for most of the shots uh, in this video, the ship is set up on its stand, which I really like the look of. David has included a small printout sticker 
Honor for the UCS Viper. It's got all the same similarities you're used to seeing from other LEGO UCS sets, though a little bit smaller because it just kind of fits better with the stand. Personally, I like the detailing of the stand so much that I kind of choose to display it without the sticker just as a personal choice. For me, it feels like the ship is immersed in the Battlestar Galactica universe just a little bit more, not necessarily like this stand uh, mimics exactly what you saw from the show, but it certainly does uh, have a feel like it does fit in with the actual build of the ship. Like this Viper could actually land on something like this or be supported by some kind of grip. It doesn't really stud into place, it just sort of rests along the smooth surface, but it's absolutely snug as a bug and it's probably one of the better stands that I have seen for a larger set like this. And he does a similar thing with the spinner and actually I think all of his large builds. It's a really nice way to keep the model a little bit more immersed in the universe instead of having one of those standard Technic Link arm sets that you're used to seeing from just about all of the standard LEGO UCS sets. When it comes to more detailing that I like, you certainly cannot uh, overlook the thrusters that you have in the back. The black outline is from a larger tread, and then there's an inner layer of grill pieces that are clipped on and splayed out ever so slightly to give that look of even extra thrust on the inside. There is good complex greebling in places on the ship where there absolutely still should be, even though it's such a smooth build. And probably one of the best features of this model, especially when you get close up to it in person, is the cavity that you have along the nose or the snout or the whatever this part of the ship is. The cavity goes in quite deep and I sort of appreciate that you can still see a bit of that Technic frame on the inside. For all we know, that mechanical detailing could totally correspond with the universe of the Viper here. And I can always appreciate when a builder can incorporate both the technical or structural interior part of the uh, design along with the pretty or visual aspect of the model that you see on the outside. This in fact improves it. The intakes also have a wonderful shape. You can see a similar grill splaying out effect like you saw from the back thrusters sort of on the inside but it's all black there. Now I think it is worth going over how this model is handled. This is me picking it up and moving it around. You can hold it from the center very easily with one hand, though I'm telling you it's actually pretty heavy. You have to have a pretty good uh, grip to hold on to it for the whole time through. You'll notice as I close the landing gear here that some of those white tiles can kind of pop out or pop away. Uh, I think we just used older clip pieces that had a bit of extra resistance, so it's just something to take into account. I am kind of handling that section with a little bit of extra care as to make sure that those pieces don't sort of pop out in a funny way. The wings are strong, the engines are strong, the back is strong. Everything about this is pretty strong, but once again, the model is just so incredibly heavy that I would absolutely recommend you pretty much only hold it from the main center of the body. That isn't to say that if you bumped this thing up against a wall, uh, I have a feeling most of the pieces would stay intact and I don't think anything too large would come off those wings are actually attached by several Technic uh, link arms and absolutely nothing I can find on the nose would fall off. The Technic structural body goes pretty much right to the very front and all the way to the back. Though Battlestar Galactica has officially ended, at least the reimagined series, the most recent series has officially ended uh, quite some time ago, there's still a pretty dedicated fan base as there are many for good, well-written and well-made sci-fi shows. I've got no doubt in my mind that at least part of the long-lasting relationship uh, fans have with this show is due to its uh, excellent visual quality. And I don't necessarily mean like special effects. What I mean is that the ships and the universe that the characters occupied had a nice bit of realism mixed with some fun, flashy flair. The Colonial Viper here, Colonial Viper Mark II, is I'd say the embodiment of what I'm talking about here. And so far, we're really glad with the way people have been responding to this model. Guys, if you have stuck around in this video this long, please let me know what you think about this mock. Ramon built this ship primarily. He absolutely loved it. He kept on talking about how he liked the interior, how it was put together. And so anyways, I pass it on to you guys. If you've stuck around this long, uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do what you guys do. Let me know what kind of mocks you want to see put up in the web store later or just fun things that you'd like to see built. That's going to be it for this episode, everybody. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.